for whatever reason, uh, 1986 was the year, child, I remember, was the year when the electronic studio, home studio, synthesizer world started. And it was incredibly primitive. And people who were doing it, they'd have rooms with one, two, three, four, five, six keyboards stacked on top of each other with wires crisscrossing, you know, and, and you have to, between pieces, unhook this one and hook up this one and make sure this is working. You know, it's, it's really primitive and really complicated. And, and the sound was really, you know, quite sort of un, unmusical at the time. It was very... Uh, da, 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 you know, it was, it was not warm, you know, and um, but it was a time that, you know, you had to decide, am I going to start in with this or just keep doing what I was doing? And it was, I know a lot of comp composers said, no, that's bullshit, you know, we're not going on with this, you know, that's not going to last, this is... This is, these are toys, this is not real music, blah, 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 okay? So, but I heard something. I heard, there was this one composer, his name was Brad Fidel, 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 who did music, did a whole slew of TV music uh, for, uh, for, on his home studio. And it was very, very simple. And there was something about it. There was something to it. Because he was getting called all the time. And, and tons of these shows. And I'm listening, thinking, what is it? You know, what's going on here? You know, it's just a single line of music. And, you know, so I thought, gee, I, I like this. I'd like to get into this. This might be going somewhere. So I remember my... My accountant of all people said, look, here's the biggest, most expensive machine there is. You get that, you know, don't fool around with these little Casio deals or whatever, you know, go for the big time. Okay, so I did, took me quite a while to really get a handle on it, but you're talking about Falcon Crest. I my wife and I bought a place in Vermont, like in, I don't know, 80, well, maybe around 85 or 84. And why it was in Vermont is because this machine I had was invented by these two guys at Dartmouth. And they had a seminar for it one summer. I had a friend who was a producer, and he said, listen, I'm... I'm they want me to do Falcon Crest, and they said I could use anyone I want on the music. Do you want to do it? I said, yeah, sure. And he said, well, how are you going to do it? You know, you, you have your place in, in uh, Vermont and in Santa Monica. And I said, well, you know, I've got a setup here in, in Vermont. And he said, well, how are you going to get the music to us? I'll figure it out, blah, blah, blah. So I did the music and recorded it on this on four-track tape. Now, four-track tape is, is what the Beatles used to do Sarge and Pepper. Now, <laughs> music for Falcon Crest was not as, as good as that. I didn't have George Martin standing next to me. <laughs> but I got these people to come from Los Angeles, this couple, nutty couple, who mixed the music for me. And then we put the tapes in FedEx boxes, and out it went. And that went on for a, a while, you know. Uh, I'm not sure it was the right uh, approach when he wanted it, and no one said, you're fired, so I kept <laughs> doing it until he was fired, and then they went on to someone else. <laughs>